making some fingerless gloves. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make these beginner friendly fingerless gloves. They are great and so versatile. There's so much that you can do to really make them your own, which is even more exciting. If at any point in this video you do like what you see or you're enjoying the content, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell and then click all, that way you get notified whenever I release a brand new video. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects, tips and tricks, fun giveaways, and so much more. You are not gonna wanna miss out. All right, so the pattern for these fingerless gloves can be located in both the description section and the comment section below this video. All you have to do is click on that link, pay for the pattern, print it out, and be ready to crochet with me. You don't have to pay for the pattern to get it. I will show you step-by-step step how I made these fingerless gloves in the tutorial today, though the pattern may be helpful if you want to skip to the next step faster or if you want to have it on hand for making more than just one pair. <laughs> All right, so when you are ready to go, let's go ahead and dive right into what materials I used to make these beginner-friendly fingerless gloves. The materials that you're going to need to make your fingerless gloves will include a yarn that is a size four weight or worsted medium, Aran 10-12 ply or 8 WPI sized yarn. I used exactly uh, the Hirschner's brand called Willow Yarns Dusk in the color Rainstorm. That's exactly what I am using, but really you can use whatever yarn that you have on hand as long as it is the exact same size yarn that I'm using. That way your dimensions come as close to my dimensions as possible. Okay, I used approximately 142 yards of yarn, 114 meters of yarn, 57 grams of yarn, or two ounces of yarn to accomplish both fingerless gloves. Okay, you will also need a crochet hook size G6 or 4.00 millimeter crochet hook. If you are using a G6 crochet hook and it says 4.25 millimeters on there, it's fine. Go ahead and just use it, it's not a big deal. You'll also want a pair of scissors and a yarn needle or tapestry needle to weave in all of those ends. I will have a link to everything you see here in both the comment section and description section below this video. So if you wanna get your hands on anything specifically, all you have to do is click on that link and purchase the item. Or if you have these things on hand and you are ready to go, let's go ahead and dive right into actually making our fingerless gloves. All right, we begin with our yarn and our crochet hook, starting with a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. Create your slip knot, attach your crochet hook, and we are ready to begin. So we're gonna start by making the cuff of our fingerless glove here. We start here at the wrist section. We're going to begin by chaining 16 chains. One, two, three, four, five, 14, 15, and 16. Great. All right, for row one, we're going to single crochet in the second chain from our crochet hook. So looking at our V-stitches, there's one, two, single crochet in the second chain. And then we're going to make one single crochet stitch in each chain all the way across. And that's our row one. You should end row one with a total of 15 single crochet stitches. Thirteen, fourteen, and last stitch here, fifteen. Perfect. All right, so for row two, we're going to chain one. We're going to turn our work. And then for row two, we are going to make one single crochet stitch in the back loops only of each stitch all the way down. So to make a single crochet stitch in the back loop only, we're going to actually look at the top of our work where you can see the V stitch here. We're going to take our crochet hook and place it in the middle of that V stitch. So you see the V stitch and just go underneath the back loop only. Yarn over, pull through, 
yarn over, pull through. And that is a single crochet back loop only. You're going to repeat this in each stitch all the way across, ending with 15 single crochet back loop only stitches. So again, finding the V stitch on the top, taking our crochet hook in the middle of that V, back loop only. And 15, perfect. All right, so what you will notice is it created this ridge here where it looks kind of pointed and that's good. That's what we are looking for here. What we are going to do for rows three through the end of row 28 is just repeat row two. That's all we're doing. So we're going to chain one. We will turn our work and continue making one single crochet back loop only in each stitch all the way across. Each row will end with 15 stitches and you're just gonna repeat this through the end of row 28. If, you're, if you lose count or you're curious about how to count, if you look at your ridges, each point will be created after you create two rows. All right, so at, there'll be a point here where you will be able to lay your work down and just count your points. It'll be two, four, six, eight. So go ahead and continue making your stitches through the end of row 28, and I will meet you at the end of row 28 to show you what we do next. Great, just finished row 28 here, and this is really where you can deviate. What we have just made is the cuff to go around our wrist here. If you need your cuff to be longer to get around your wrist, you need a little more room here, make a couple more rows. It's not gonna hurt anything, okay? Or if you don't like how long this cuff is, maybe you want it shorter, then feel free to back up and only chain however many less you want to chain. This is a total of 16 chains for 15 stitches in each row. Maybe you only want 10 chains for nine stitches in each row or whatever you want. This is exactly where you can deviate for your cuff. Okay, now we're going to move on to actually closing our cuff so it will work for our glove. You're going to fold this in half, chain one, turn your work. We will insert our crochet hook into the first stitch underneath both loops. Come to the other side here. Find the very first stitch. It's our foundation row that we're going to slip stitch into. Yarn over, pull through both, and then pull that loop through the loop already on your crochet hook, leaving you with just one loop on your crochet hook, okay? And then we go to the next stitch. Insert our crochet hook into the next stitch underneath both loops. Follow all the way across, entering into the second stitch on the other side. Then yarn over, pull through both of those sides and pull that loop through the loop on your crochet hook for that slip stitch. Continue across for all 15 stitches. You should count a total of 15 slip stitches here on the top if you're choosing to count. Otherwise, it should be a one-to-one -one ratio. Just enter into the stitch, follow all the way through to the stitch on the other side of the work and slip stitch. All right, last stitch here, stitch number 15, through both sides, yarn over, pull through, and slip stitch. Great, okay, the next step we wanna do is we wanna turn this cuff inside out so this major point is not so noticeable. So we're gonna take our work, we're gonna flip it inside out. Great, all right, so this tail that we have working here, let's leave it on the outside, leave it unworked. We're going to actually weave that in with our yarn needle at the end of the project. We do not wanna crochet over it. We wanna do a more permanent, better hold there. Okay, so for this next step, we're going to be working along the sides 
of our rose, we're going to start making the top part of the fingerless glove. We begin by finding this next row over and we are going to be making two single crochet stitches on the top of that row. So I see the row where my loop is, next row, between those last two stitches here, inserting my crochet hook, single crochet one and single crochet two. Perfect. Next, we're going to make one single crochet stitch in the side of the next 26 rows. There's a total of 28 rows here. I want to make two single crochets in the first and only one single crochet stitch in the next 26. So if I look at my the peak here, find the peak, then find the two stitches, leave one stitch in the front, insert my crochet hook between stitch one and two, and make one single crochet stitch. Then find the next peak. We will make one single crochet stitch on one side of the peak and one single crochet stitch on the other side of the peak. That's another way to go about it. Other than that, you will count how many single crochet stitches we got. We got two here, one in the next 26, so you should end this part with a total of 28 single crochet stitches, okay? So one, and then other side of the peak, one. Next peak, one, and one. Next peak, one, and one. eight great and in the very last row here so here's the peak I only made one single crochet stitch on this side of the peak on the other side of the peak we are going to end by making two single crochet stitches in that last space here one two so ultimately what i want you to do is make a total of 30 single crochet stitches all the way around if you deviated and made more or less rows here for your cuff you're just making two single crochet stitches or an increased single crochet stitch in the first row and an increased single crochet stitch in the last row and every row in between just gets one single crochet stitch in the side of that row. For us, we have a total of 30 single crochet stitches here in row one. And then slip stitch into the top of the very first single crochet stitch, and that closes off row one. Perfect, awesome, let's move on. So for row two, we're going to chain one. We're going to half double crochet in that first stitch that we just slip stitched into half double crochet, and then make one half double crochet stitch in every stitch all the way around. You will end round two with a total of 30 half double crochet stitches. Twenty-nine and 30, great. Go ahead and slip stitch into the top of the very first half double crochet stitch, and that just closes off row two. All right, so for row three through row six, all we are doing is repeating row two. That's all we're doing. We're going to chain one, and we're going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. Each row, row three through row six, will end with a total of 30 half double crochet stitches. All right, go ahead and continue and I will meet you at the end of row six to show you what we do next. 30, great. All right, slip stitch into the top of the first stitch of that row. This was row six for me, so now I'm ready to move on to row seven. For row seven, we actually begin the process of making our thumb hole. So we're gonna chain one, half double crochet in the first stitch, and half double crochet in each of the next 26 stitches for a total of 27 half double crochet stitches. So one, two, three, 25, 26, 
27. Perfect. So there should be a total of three stitch spaces here. One, two, three. We're going to leave them unworked. We are not going to touch those. All right, let's move on to row eight. We're going to chain one. We're going to actually turn our work. So now we are working our stitches from the inside out and make one half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. One, two, three, four, twenty-five, twenty-six, and twenty-seven. It's super important to count here. That way you can make sure that you've made all the stitches you need to make. It would be very easy at this point to not count and miss a stitch and that would not be good because all it will do is cause your fingerless glove to start to angle inward and not fit right okay so counting is super important here all right so for row nine and row ten we are just repeating row eight we're just going to chain one we will turn our work and make one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around you will end both row nine and row ten with a total of 27 half double crochet stitches I will meet you at the end of row 10 to show you what we do different for row 11. 27, great, so that was the end of row 10 for me. For row 11, we will chain one, we will turn our work, continue making one half double crochet stitch in each stitch around for a total of 27 half double crochet stitches, and I will meet you at the end of that 27th half double crochet stitch, and that is where we will chain three, and just slip stitch into that first half double crochet stitch that we make. So that is everything we're doing for row 11. Let me go ahead and make my way around and then you'll see me back here to chain three and slip stitch to close. Twenty-seven, great. Now I'm gonna chain three, one, two, three, and slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet stitch that I made for round 11 or row 11. Perfect. What we just made was the rectangle shape for our thumb hole. Perfect, right? All right, so for row 12, we're going to chain one and half double crochet, one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around and make one half double crochet stitch in each chain also. You should end row 12 with a total of 30 half double crochet stitches. One, two, three, 27 in the chain here. I like to go in the chain. 28, there we go, 29 and 30. Perfect, slip stitch into the top of the first half a double crochet to close round 12. We're going to go ahead and move right into row 13 and row 14, which are the last two rows of our fingerless glove here. And all you do for row 13 and row 14 is repeat what we did in row 12. You're going to chain one and you're going to make one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around for a total of 30 half double crochet stitches and then just slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet to close your row. All right, go ahead and work row 13 and row 14. I will, I will meet you at the end of row 14 to show you how we can close off this fingerless glove and move on to the next step. One, two, three, 29 and 30. Perfect slip stitch into the top of that first half double crochet stitch. And we are done with our first fingerless glove. Now here's another point where you can deviate if you want to deviate. Insert your hand into the glove and See, is this line where you want it to hit? Do you want less coverage and maybe take out a row? Or do you want more coverage and add a row? Everybody's hands are gonna be a little bit different. 
This seems to be one size that fits me really well, exactly how I would want it to work, how it would fit the palm without being too in the way or intrusive. So this is where you can choose if you wanna add a row or take a row out. Because at this point, we are done with our fingerless glove. I'm gonna reinsert my crochet hook right there. Grab my scissors. Cut a long enough tail for me to weave in my ends at the end of the project. Yarn over, pull that tail through the loop on my crochet hook, pull tight, and I've just tied off my work. Next, I want to make a border around my thumb hole just to clean it up and make it look a lot nicer. So taking the same yarn, or if you want to change up the color, you can too. Long enough tail for us to weave in the ends creating a slip knot, attaching our crochet hook. I like to attach my yarn in a corner of the rectangle. I'll go ahead and insert into this corner right here. Not the tail. <laughs> and make a slip stitch. And that slip stitch just attaches the yarn to the project getting the tail out of the way. We're going to go ahead and make a single crochet stitch in the same stitch that we just made our, our slip stitch. So single crochet. You're going to make one single crochet stitch in the side of each row. There should be a, a total of five rows here. So row one, looking for the row, finding the last two stitches of that row and inserting your crochet hook between those last two stitches. There we go, and single crochet. Next row, there's two, three, four, and five. Now we start working on the top. There should be three stitches here because we only made it three stitches wide. So one, two, and three. Now we're back to working the side of these rows on the other side. There's a total of five rows. One, two, three, four, Five, great, now we're at the bottom of the rectangle. There are three stitches wide. So one, two, and three. Slip stitch into the first single crochet stitch to close that row. I like to actually make one more row after this. So for row two of our thumb hole, I chain one, and I make one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, and 17 single crochet stitches is what I get because I added that first single crochet stitch where I joined and then slip stitch into the top of that first single crochet stitch and we are done with row two. Grab your scissors, cut a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. Yarn over that tail, pull it through the loop on your crochet hook, pull tight and you are done with your thumb hole and you are done with fingerless glove number one. When we put it on, that is now what it will look like. All we have left to do for this fingerless glove is to weave in all of our ends and it is done. Now let's go ahead and work fingerless glove number two and I'll show you where it's a little bit different. All right, so for glove number two, we actually repeat everything we did for the cuff 
and for row one through row six of glove number one. They're done the exact same way for both gloves. So go ahead and repeat everything you did for these sections, the cuff and row one through row six. It's row seven that we start to deviate and make it a little bit different. All right, so for row seven, we will actually begin by slip stitching into the first 13 stitches. So we did actually, if I back this up, when we finished row six, we slip stitched into the first stitch to close off row six. I want you to now slip stitch 13 more stitches into row seven. So one, two, three, four, 12, 13. Perfect. Now we can actually officially begin row seven. For row seven, we will chain one, we will turn our work and we will start working one half double crochet stitch in the next 27 stitches. So including in the same stitch we had slip stitched into, make your half double crochet. And I actually half double crochet into the stitch. I don't pay any attention to that slip stitch that we had made over it which will make your half double crochet stitches a little bit longer, but it's fine. Twenty-seven, perfect. So leave those three stitch spaces unworked. That is the beginning of your thumb hole. For row eight, we're gonna chain one, turn our work, and make one half double crochet stitch in each stitch around to this stitch here for a total of 27 half double crochet stitches. One, two, three, 26 and 27. Perfect. Okay, so for row nine and row 10, all we are doing is repeating what we did for row eight, where we chain one, turn our work and make one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. For row nine and row 10, you should end both rows with a total of 27 stitches. Here we go. Two, three, 26, 27. Great, that's the end of row 10 for me. For row 11, we will chain one, we will turn our work, and we will make one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around and end by chaining three and slip stitching into the top of the first half double crochet stitch to close row 11. So here we go. One, two, three, 26, 27, and then chain three, one, two, three, and slip stitch top of that first half double crochet stitch to close row 11. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So this second glove for round 12, it's worked a little bit differently because we don't want to continue working the inside out of each of the next few rows, right? So we're going to chain one and we're actually going to turn our work again. That way we can start working on the outside of the glove. For row 12, we begin by making one half double crochet stitch in each chain and then one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. You should end row 12 with a total of 30 stitches. One, two, three, 29 and 30 slip stitch into the top of that first half double crochet stitch to close row 12. Okay, so for row 13 and row 14, we're just repeating what we did in row 12. We're going to chain one and make one half double crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. Row 13 and row 14 will we'll both have 30 half double crochet stitches in each row. I will meet you at the end of row 14 to show you what we do next. 
30. Great. Slip stitching into the top of that first half double crochet stitch. And I have just finished glove number two. I'm going to go ahead and do a test to make sure that I'm happy with where everything is at. And that is where I want it to be. Perfect. Okay, so I am good to grab my scissors, cut a long enough tail for me to weave in my ends, yarn over that tail, pull the tail through the loop on my crochet hook and tie off. Perfect, and now the last thing I need to do is make my border around the thumb hole. So again, I'm going to go ahead and create my slip knot, leaving a tail long enough for me to weave in my ends, attach my crochet hook, and again, I like to start in this corner. I don't know why, I just do. And slip stitch to connect the yarn. Single crochet in that stitch to begin. So one, and then I have five rows. So row one, row two, row three, I'm working this really funky, but I just want to try to make you see row four and row five. Great. On the top of the work, I have three stitch spaces. So one, two, three, that brings me over to the other side of the work where there are five rows. One, two, three, four, five. And that brings me to the bottom of the work where there are three stitches. One, two, Three. Slip stitch into the top of that first single crochet stitch to close that first row of our border for the thumb hole. For row two of our thumb hole border, chaining one, single crochet in that first stitch that we just slip stitched into, and then we're going to make a total of 17 single crochet stitches all the way around, ending row two with a slip stitch into the first single crochet stitch to close that row. So one, then two, 16 and 17 slip stitch. Boom, grab my scissors, cut off a long enough tail for me to weave in my ends at the end of the project, yarn over that tail, pull that tail through the loop on my crochet hook, pull tight, and your project's done. The only thing you have left to do now is weave in all of those ends and your glove is done. All right, so what did you think of the fingerless gloves pattern? Was it easy enough to follow? How are you deviating the pattern to make it your own? I would love to hear. Throw that in the comment section below. All right, so if you enjoyed this project, you might also really enjoy these videos right here. Also check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, crocheting with me. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have the best day, and I will see you with my next video. Bye, guys.